Um, so this is a shower thought. Uh, basically, um, so basically, if you think about if you think about it this way, it makes sense. So uh, if you think about the Grover's algorithm being sort of the the two steps, like the 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 oracle being your cost function, and then Grover's operator being like a mixer, then and then the problem that Grover's solving is you know find the optimal value that's the one you're 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 kind of modeling with your cost function. Uh, you know, and and in this case, your your function is just you know kind of like flat, and then flat, and then the element or elements you're flagging are sort of the optimals. And really, <laughs> did this is something that then that, that then kind of makes sense. You map with a continuous Q, you can you could eventually map with a continuous QAOA uh, algorithm, and that's what I'm going to try to because I think intuitively that's what's happening. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I, I wanted to approach uh, Grover from uh, from continuous variable quantum computing, and I was just like having some random uh, having that random thought like pop up in my mind. It was like, okay, uh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, that that uh, that kind of makes sense. Um, but I'll take a look at it. I think uh, Jack mentioned that in this research paper. I think this is Guillaume's research paper. Not just his, but yeah, and I think there's there it should be a section in here. If I am not, but it's really short. Maybe it's another paper. I mean, it's extremely con it's extremely compact, but maybe. Oh yeah, no, there is a bit of a a, a bit of a okay. There's a bit of a stuff about Grover. Okay, so I'll go I'll go ahead and read that uh, today and see. If next step we can kind of build that um, as an example and and try to confirm that and that intuition, but I kind of see here what was that Gaussian operators? I just tend to get don't want to get distracted. Okay, so this is what we're going to be doing today. Um, a quantum approximate algorithm for continuous problems. So and. Because I'm hoping this will give me sort of a different perspective on Grover's, which is, has already happened just because of that. Um, what I just mentioned, right? The way that you kind of map the two problems. Uh, because then I want to really understand if this is the case, then how can we really understand the the effect of those mixers, right? Or, or, or how can we understand Grover's operator as a mixer itself? Because from a the cost perspective, it's like, yeah, it's just kind of a function, right? So you're you're building a function, um, and then, yeah, and then so every time that you're running your cost function, yeah, it's interesting. I think that I think that kind of helps understand you know both QAOA as well from Grover's perspective and and Grover from QAOA perspective. That's an interesting. Um, Look at it. So we introduce a quantum approximate optimization algorithm for continuous optimization. The algorithm is based on the dynamics of a quantum system moving in an energy potential, which encodes the objective function. Mm. By approximating the dynamics at finite time steps, the algorithm can be expressed as alternating evolution under two non commuting Hamiltonians. We show that each step of the algorithm updates the wave function in the, di in the direction of its local gradient with an additional momentum dependent displacement mm. for initial states in a superposition over many points this method can therefore be interpreted as a coherent version of gradient descent gradient descent in, a, in superposition this approach can be used for both um, constrained and unconstrained optimization in terms of computational complexity we show how variants of the algorithm can recover continuous variable grow search that's what I'm interested in and how a single iteration can replicate continuous variable instantaneous quantum polynomial circuits. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Finally, we test the algorithm through numerical simulation. Um, okay, let me just fly over quickly first. There's an introduction section, variational quantum circuits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, then. Uh, 
there's a bit of a challenge here. Algorithm is to find efficient methods for optimizing the variational parameters of the circuits, and it's possible to choose the gate parameters to reproduce well known heuristics of grand design algorithms. Quantum algorithm. For example, we describe the quantum algorithm in the model in the model of continuous variable quantum computing, where registers are quantum harmonic oscillators characterized by positions and momentum operators. Um, However, the algorithm can also be implemented in a standard qubit model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, where registers are digitally simulated quantum harmonic oscillators. You see, that's an interesting, an interesting perspective because here it's, so you're basically taking a bunch of like, uh, like a bunch of qubits and then using those to represent real numbers, I guess. That's something that in Guillaume's presentation that is available on uh, on, on YouTube, he talks a little bit about it. It's interesting. Um, consider function. So here we go a bit of a, a bit into the a bit, a bit into the, the, the maths. Um, yeah, that's the whole thing about approximating. That's the same that I've seen when uh, where was that? I was reading about. I was reading about the uh, uh, the, the the continuous variable machine learning models. I think. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Mm -hmm. What else do we have here? For instance, the graph reduction of both learning. This is this is where the meat is, I guess. Let's well choose different. Finally, it is in principle possible to choose different mixed Hamiltonians as long as they do not commute with the cost Hamiltonian. A concrete example is the, the number mixer, it's an annihilation operator, mm. the update rule. That no, this non-commuting, this non uh, non-commuting condition is an interesting one. Um, don't really fully understand why. I mean, I, I, why they must not commute. But okay, one advantage of the mix is that. It, it is readily implementable using phase shifters. As for the kinetic mixer, it can be applied as a product of independent Gaussian transformations on one on 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 each mode. Constraint optimization. In addition to unconstrained continuous optimization, the algorithm can be applied to continuous constraint optimization problems, which are relevant in many areas. Minimum of a function subject to a set of equality constraints and a set of inequality constraints. To enforce these constraints during optimization, we can add energetic penalties to the cost Hamiltonian, mm -hmm. where VE and VI are the constraining potentials for the equality and inequality clauses. Granted, uh, but for the so choice of constraining potential is with energy lambda uh, for the equality constraints a possible choice of constraining potential is the is okay with this potential creates a value of low energy values in the landscape which drives the dynamics towards the sub, sub many faults satisfying the inequality the equality constraints this happens to be where the gradient vanishes um Okay. Um, so basically, introducing values, introducing minimal, like introducing the really low energy points, and and I'm assuming that's where you would kind of go if you if you want to go the direction of Grover. Uh, that would be this the element you're searching. Um, This happens with the gradient. Na, 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 na. I'm just reading through right now at this point. Uh, what about the inequalities? Um, this rectifying function has a linear increasing slope for positive values and is flat for negative values. Thus, the VI potential will drive the dynamics of the transition towards the region obeying the inequality. Uh huh. That's interesting. One other analytic position is the Swish function. Encoding discrete optimization problems. 
discrete optimization problems. Uh, handle discrete optimization tasks, a broad class of discrete problems, uh, polynomial and constraint binary optimization, PUBO. Um, mm, 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 mm. Functions. Complexity quantum approximate optimization algorithms are by construction. Heuristics. Oh, so this is, this is about okay. So complexity. Quantum. Okay, I see Grover's Grover thing here. Mm. So, quantum approximate optimization algorithms are by construction, heuristics, and therefore the merits are ultimately decided by testing their performance on concrete problems. Nevertheless, here we describe two notable complexity theory statements about the algorithm. First, we show that QIOA circuits can encode Grover search algorithm over continuous spaces, which is known to achieve a quadratic speed up compared to classical algorithms. So, here's a reference. What is this reference that it take me to? There's an actual... Uh, there's an actual paper... Ah, and that's actually, I think, one of the ones that I found originally when I was looking into implementation of of QAO, continuous variable QAOA. So that's, ah, okay, so here there's an actual full paper on this. Which I might take a look next. Maybe. Okay. Back at, back at here where the reference was. Uh, this function can be mapped to a cost Hamiltonian by defining the indicator displaced squeezed states. And setting the cost Hamiltonian, the exponential, the expon exponential of this cost Hamiltonian can be done with quantum state exponentiation. Oh, sorry. I just uh, oh my. Okay, so there's uh, I w forgot. I, I missed the part here, which is known. Okay, so first we showed that QI circuits can encode Grover search algorithm over continuous spaces, which is known to achieve a quadratic speed up compared to classical algorithms. Additionally, we outlined how a single step of the algorithm can replicate continuous variable instantaneous quantum polynomial circuits, which are believed to be impossible to efficiently simulate classically. Suppose that we have a target value, xf, it's a real number, yeah, with corresponding oracle function. Okay, um, not familiar with this way of expressing the oracle function, but I guess that's something that is defined in this paper, in this other paper. Following reference 48, this function can be mapped to a cost Hamiltonian by defining the indicator displaced squeezed states. Mm. Okay. Uh, and setting the cost Hamiltonian to this. Okay. The exponential of this cost Hamiltonian can be done with quantum state exponentiation. As to the mixer, we choose a projector onto a state that is sharp in the moment. As for a mixer, we choose a projector in onto a state that is sharp in the momentum basis, namely f is that what, this this big f, however that's called, is the tensor product of Fourier transforms on all modes. What? and x0 is some choice of initial momentum value. The resulting QAOA unitary reproduces Grover's algorithm and it's speed up by setting um, the parameters to pi so that the two angles 
the pi for all j's oh okay the inability that's that's it right <laughs> I will probably switch into doing some second steps again after the Michelle Stiblinski Tang. Okay, and then the paper because I had talking about the C B I Q P thing. Um Right. 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 Um so we probably have to so I I'm probably interested in then in going through these quickly also overview try to understand how this is then so what's the essence of this paper is from from 2000 from the year 2000 so I oh know 2018 2018 why did I say 2000 2018 quantum searching with continuous variables huh. but basically what what here what Guillaume is giving us here is just how you how can you then um, How can you build your cost Hamiltonian, your mix Hamiltonian in a way that you that you mix that? So this might be enough to maybe quickly try and build it, but um, make an example. And then, uh, so there's here's some something with squeezing. Yeah, kind of use squeezing gates to to basically get that. But then and and then what what take what what is interesting is the way the the mixer fun the, the the mixer Hamiltonian or the mixer operator is here described as a tensor product of Fourier transforms on all modes. Fourier transforms. Interesting, and then setting the angles. Pi is then the parameter you're you're gonna use. Crazy. Um. Hmm. Doesn't make fully sense right now, intuitively yet, but it. Uh. So, what does this other paper say? A fast quantum search algorithm for continuous variables is presented. The result in the quantum continuous variable analog of Gorbis algorithms originally proposed but for qubits. A continuous variable analog of the Haramard. Uh, okay, so first things. So I, I think I've seen this somewhere else. The Haramard being sort of a, con uh, a, a, a continuous, like a digital analog of the Fourier transform operation in CBQC and this may be having something to do here with the uh, with the mixer being a tensor product of Fourier transforms because the fact that it says a tensor product it means it's applied to all Q modes right that's what I would say and intuitively and the Fourier transform um, and the Fourier transform in this case would be the Haramards and then if you if, if we take a look at Grover's Grover's algorithm circuit. Let's see if I can find something quick. Uh, yeah, so there is there is here in the diffuser, right? So there is this all this bunch of Hadamards in here. So that might be something something. There might be something here. Okay, cool. Um, it's used in conjunction with inversion about the average of quantum states to allow. Uh, so there you go. Talk about the inversion about the average. <laughs> I don't, I wanted to have something a bit more, but maybe maybe the CBQC version is a bit more obvious that this is the way to explain the algorithm. Um, we'll see. Of quantum states to allow the approximate identification of an unknown quantum state in a, in a way that gives the square root speed up over the search algorithms using classical quantum variables. Um, is this quantum search algorithm is robust for a generalized Fourier transform on continuous variables? So the paper is also 
relatively short. It's four pages. It's pretty dense. Uh, especially, it's all math, I think. Mm. But let's try to do a quick fly through. So quantum systems can reduce. Mm, you cannot. As a result, it's possible quantum computers to perform certain computational tasks faster than classical computers. But the real interest of this field. Okay, so this is a bit of an introduction. Usually implemented in quantum systems whose observable. These algorithms are usually implemented in quantum systems whose observables are discrete spectra, such as a collection of two-level atoms, ions, spin uh, particles called qubits. Other classes of quantum systems whose observables are continuous spectra. So it is important to note that how these algorithms can be generalized for continuous quantum variables. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. In this letter, in this letter, we propose a fast quantum search algorithm for continuous variables. Here, a continuous variable can be anything: position, momentum, energy, unbounded or amplitudes of the electromagnetic field. With the help of the Fourier transform viewed as an active operation on a continuous basis state, analogous to the Hadamard transform in the case of qubits, and a suitable generalized inversion operator, we construct a search operator which can be implemented on a continuous variable quantum computer. Um, the inversion operator requires the projection operator for continuous basis states, which we discussed. We showed that the blah, 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 blah. Here we discussed how to perform a quantum search algorithm using continuous variables. First, we need to map a conventional discrete search problem into continuous variable context. So first they go ahead and map, mapping the problem. So suppose we have a function uh, uh, defined in the domain k with k. Okay, this function has a non-zero non -zero equal, non-zero value equal to 1 for some elements and 0 for all other elements. Our task is to discover the values given the ability, the, the, the values of kf. Okay, so the uh, values that, that map to a 1. In, it's, this is a search function. Our task is to discover the value of kf uh, given the ability to apply the function to inputs or superpositions of inputs and given no further information about the function fk. Um, with continuous, okay, so in order to implement these in a quantum computer with continuous variables, we require a collection of n quants. n quants. Maybe those are the n, maybe those are the modes. Mm. n quants. Quants. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Anyway, um. Uh, ba 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 Where was I? Quants. Eh. Maybe I just read it wrong. Where was I here? Uh, Q nuts, sorry. Q nuts. It's like donuts. Q nuts. Maybe, maybe it's a typo. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Maybe these are the Q modes. The state vector of each QNAT, no, I don't think it's a typo. <laughs> it's repeated again here. Um, the state vector of each QNAT belongs to Hilbert space of infinite dimensions. Since we have an infinite number of basis states, we cannot map each basis state. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's consider a collection of continuous variables. Hilbert space is spanned by a basis of states, satisfying the orthogonality, blah, blah, blah. So here, go ahead and explain how, how, how they map the. How they would map, how they would do the cost function, right? That's kind of in the context of continuous variable embedding, executing the function of corresponds to adjoining an extra state to the system, originally in the state zero, and applying an operator if x belongs to the region corresponding to kf. Uh, 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 uh. If one exploits the power of quantum superposition and entanglement, however, fewer function calls are required. The final target state is given by we need a suitable unitary operator which can take the initial state to the final state just as we have the Hadamard transformation in discrete computation one of the basic operations with continuous variables is the Fourier transform between so I probably got to dig a bit into the Fourier transform a bit more uh, in 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 the quantum com in instead of the uh, discrete 
uh, this grid continuous variable quantum computing but it's basically uh, it's great condition. one of the basic operations with continuous variables is the Fourier transform between position and momentum variables in phase space by defining the Fourier trans it's funny this phase space I keep seeing that no, it's the phase space Fox space I don't know uh, by defining I don't know what's the difference by defining the Fourier transform as an active operation on n quant states we can write this okay and both are position position basis this has been used okay in developing error correction code for continuous variables this first one. um <coughs> I know those are modes here so I don't know what a QNAT is uh if it's simply an eigenstate of the conjugate quadrature, then I was able to finding the. Hmm. Target state, therefore, okay. I'm, I'm, I was supposed to just fly over it. So basically, they explain here, okay, so this has to do with the Fourier transform uh, being applied in there. Uh, but it's maybe not as always, as. as, as it's maybe the Fourier transform is maybe the so I think we're not talking about the diffuser yet we're talking about the oracle or we're talking about the preparation so we're talking about getting into superposition first and I think that's what they're that's what we're going to use the Fourier transform for that's my guess here um, then they talk about uh, uh, this variable can I hear Okay, the next one, the next is not very okay. okay, so here they already start talking about the actual, because this is really similar to the to Grover's diffuse operator expression that I've seen uh, in some places. Oh yeah, here that thing here, you see, like two thing minus uh, quite uh, not the same. But yeah, actually, it's pretty similar. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, so this means that up there, there must be talking about the, the superposition and the application of the cost function. Uh, and then there is the inverse thing here. Cannot be projected like this grid case. We cannot define the projection projection operator for the basis because the operator. And that's it. And basically a bunch of maths. Thus the operator C creates superpositions of two quant states, just as Grover's operator creates superpositions of two qubit states. Once we understand the action of the of, on the Q nats, we can obtain the total number of steps required to reaching the target state. Okay. Uh, Okay, this is then I think they go ahead and try to prove how many steps it takes and stuff like that. So we're less interested in that, I think. Um, more interested in the mapping, actual, and in the actual mapping. Because that ma I was hoping that would give me a bit of more clarity. But I think that's the right paper to dive into. I'm going to stop here for now. Um, but basically, uh, one, step at, one step at a time. So here, basically, um, Guillaume just gives you sort of the... Um, where you can parametrize the, or how can you map directly based on that paper? Um, so how can you how can you how can you parametrize a QAOA so that it does the same like Grover? But then this paper actually really d deep dives into into the, the the continuous version of of Grover, which is really what I'm interested in. So. Um, To try to understand or see Grover's from another perspective, it just helps sometimes in this this mapping between one wo the digital world and the and the and the analog world. Um, that's I don't want to go too deep into this. I don't want to go and implement stuff here, and and I, I don't want to really go too deep into this. I might uh, I might play with this a little bit. I might I might. I might try to actually visualize something in in Xanadu's uh, strawberry fields or something like that. We'll see. Maybe that helps me understand. Once I, this could be an interesting thing to play with. Once I understand it a little bit better, and maybe this as well. 
uh, but I don't want to go too deep into this just to try to get sort of another, another perspective uh, into Grover's algorithm um, and then uh, and then see if we see if I can approach the digital the digital version so the the, the actual discrete variable quantum computing version and break it down in a different way because the the video that I that I did about the uncertainty moving and stuff like that I kind of like it but I feel it's still not it's still not there where I want it to be so that's that's my that's my goal perfect